Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, let's try to understand what is the difference between DevOps engineering, SRA engineering and platform engineering. Towards the end of this video, I'll also share some real-time use cases that will help you understand how can these three teams coexist in an organization. That is, how can a DevOps engineering team SRA engineering team and platform engineering team can exist as different teams in an organization, but help each other to improve the efficiency of the organization. Otherwise, a lot of times you might have read people writing that platform engineering is going to replace DevOps or SRE is going to replace DevOps, which is not true. These streams are totally different and they serve different use cases altogether. And in today's video, I will highlight those differences. So please try to watch it till the end. Let's start with DevOps engineering part. DevOps engineering is basically a culture that helps in reducing operations time as well as efforts. How DevOps engineers reduce the operations time and effort? Let's talk about it. So DevOps engineers, automate the infrastructure requirements, DevOps engineer set up CICD pipelines, which are nothing but orchestrators, which orchestrate multiple stages that are involved in shipping the code changes that can be features or bug fixes from the developer's machine to an environment such as dev environment, staging environment or production. Usually there are multiple stages in this such as integrating unit test cases, building of this application, running static code analysis, running some security scanning on the code changes, creating a Docker container, deploying this Docker container, scanning the Docker container. Multiple stages are involved in this orchestration process. Apart from this, DevOps engineers also take care of configuration management. In the world of public and private cloud, usually there are a lot of instances. So these bunch of virtual machines have to be made sure that they are meeting with the security and compliance standards of your organization. So for that, DevOps engineers make sure right packages are installed on these machines and the installed packages are up to date with the security and compliance standards. Apart from this, DevOps engineers also carry on some important tasks such as cloud administration, Kubernetes administration and cloud cost optimization for example. So again, cloud cost optimization is one of the critical activities of DevOps engineers. These days, developers, QA engineers, or multiple people use the cloud resources. And sometimes the resources that are used are underused or they remain stale for a lot of time because of which organizations have to pay a lot for these cloud providers. So DevOps engineers make sure right monitoring is set up. They write some serverless applications. Using the serverless application, they monitor the stale resources and timely delete the stale resources. So these are some popular or common roles and responsibilities of DevOps engineers. Now let's talk about SRE engineers. SRE engineers are nothing but site reliability engineers. Let me explain this with an example. Let's say I wrote a product and I've deployed this product on a Kubernetes cluster and I've exposed it to the public. Now I want to sell this product or sell the services of this product. There are few customers that are interested in buying the services from this product, but they want to understand what is the stability of this product, which is quite common. Anyone who wants to buy your product, let's say you want to even create an account or buy Netflix subscription. The first thing that you would look at, how stable is Netflix? That is how much reliable and available. That happens with every customer. So what I would do as the owner of the product or as the management of the product, I would sign up some service level agreements with my customers. And this service level agreements is nothing but a document which has bunch of service level objectives. I'll give you some example of these objectives. Some objectives can be, I will write in the SLA agreement, that I promise that this application will be available 99.9% .9 of the times for you. Or this application can withstand 
1 million requests per minute, probably 10 to 15 requests out of this 1 million requests might turn out faulty. They might receive 400 or 500, but most of these 1 million requests, that is except for 14 to 15 or 10 to 15, rest all will give proper response to the end users. So these are some service level objectives and more good these service level objectives are I can attract more customers. But now I can write up anything in the service level agreement and SLOs. But if I don't meet this SLOs, then I will have to pay huge penalty to the customers. Now comes the site reliability engineering team. This is the team that ensures that the service level objectives are met with the customers. For these things, what SRE teams does is they create some kind of service level indicators which indicate on a timely basis that, okay, are we meeting with the SLOs that we agreed with the customers? If there is a risk of not meeting, immediately take action. For this, SRE engineers create monitoring, SRE engineers create observability, they write scripts, they create events, they create alarms, they create alerts. Using all of these things, SRE engineers send out notifications to the right people. Along with that, SRE engineers might also have to get on quick production support calls with these customers. Like they might also have to work on rotational shifts. They might have to work on weekends to just make sure that this application is available, reliable and meeting the service level objectives that are signed with the customers. Now let's talk about platform engineering. Platform engineering is totally different from SRE and DevOps. Here, platform engineers are responsible for developing the platform that will help developers to ease their workflows. So here, platform engineers can be considered as platform developers and they have good experience with the coding skills. I'll give you one example again here. So let's say as a DevOps engineer or DevOps engineering team wrote a bunch of scripts. They wrote some Terraform scripts. They wrote some Ansible play looks. They wrote some uh, shell script, Python scripts. And what these scripts do is they will help developers to reduce the operational efforts. But platform engineering team, what this particular team does is, okay, I will not allow my developers or, you know, I want to make sure that these developers don't have to download each of your script. For example, the Terraform script, the developers needs to know how to download the Terraform script, how to execute this Terraform scripts, what are the parameters that are required, what are the complexities that are involved. Similarly, Ansible playbook or something related to Kubernetes controllers. So platform engineering team says, okay, I will abstract all of these things. What I will do is I will create a simple platform and all the DevOps engineer, sorry, developers have to do is they just come to this particular platform, click a button and under the hood, the Terraform scripts get run. So platform engineers can just come to this particular platform, click a button which says, get me an EC2 instance or click a button which says, get me a EKS cluster with a VPC configuration with bunch of ingress controllers installed and all that dev developers have to do is just know how to handle this particular platform. That's it. So platform engineers develop this platform which will make sure that developer workflows are very easy and developers don't have to know much of things that are happening under the hood. So this is about platform engineer. Now let's try to understand the skills point of view. So DevOps engineer skill, I think it is pretty clear. DevOps engineers should be good with cloud platforms. DevOps engineers should be good with uh, scripting. DevOps engineers should learn things like Terraform, Ansible, Kubernetes. They should be very good with Linux. These are the things. If you talk about skills of SRE engineers, so SRE engineer skills involve pretty much in monitoring, observability, writing Kubernetes controllers, probably Golang, Python. They should be good with some kind of programming. And also, SRE engineer should be good with getting on calls, quickly reacting to the things, reading the alerts, quickly responding to the alerts, these kind of things. Talking about platform engineering, they should be very good with the programming languages, they should have knowledge to create platforms which will reduce the developer's workflows complexity. Let me try to explain this finally using a real-time use case. As I have promised, 
towards the beginning of the video that I will try to explain this entire scenarios with some examples. So let's try to understand that. Let's say there is an application that is deployed on a Kubernetes cluster and there are some workflows for the application team. Now, DevOps engineers, what DevOps engineers role is to create this Kubernetes cluster. I mean, write the scripts for the creation of the Kubernetes cluster. It can be EKS, it can be on-premises, whatever it is. DevOps engineers decide what kind of uh, controller should be uh, deployed on this uh, Kubernetes platform, what kind of service-to-service uh, -service communication is required, or how to write the pod definition uh, files, what kind of pod tolerations to use, all these kinds of things that are related. SRA engineers are responsible for monitoring this application that is deployed on the Kubernetes cluster. Platform engineers, what they can do is whenever a developer needs this Kubernetes cluster, they don't have to download the scripts that are written by this DevOps engineers. They can just go to the platform that is written by the platform engineers and click a button. That's it. They get the Kubernetes cluster and they get their application deployed on the Kubernetes cluster. You can also take this example using Terraform. If you take Terraform as an example, let's say you are writing some Terraform scripts as a DevOps engineer, which will create an EC2 instance. So DevOps engineer's role is to write Terraform scripts that spins up an EC2 instance. Now SRA engineer will monitor the applications that are required installed on this EC2 instance. Platform engineers will deploy a platform or write a platform where the developers need not to know what are the commands that are required to run Terraform scripts, but they just go to the platform, click a button, and they get the Terraform scripts run under the hood. They will not be bothered what is happening under the hood. They just get an EC2 instance, right? So I hope it is very clear the skills difference between DevOps, SRE, and platform engineers. I hope you got a very clear picture between the differences and how can these teams coexist in an organization. Thank you so much for watching today's video. See you all in the next one. Bye-bye.